Okay, so we have that job ticket that we've created here. It kind of looks like this, and uh, you actually need to do something with it. So we need to be able to print it. So uh, naturally, you can go and you can sort through your records, and you can go up to File and Print, and you can just print this. And uh, if you select Current Record, that's really important. Records being browsed, it'll print everything in your found set here. But if you go to Current Record, it'll just print that one job ticket. You can click OK. That's kind of the manual way to do that. There's something else that we can do though. We can actually make a print button on that job ticket. So if I go up here to the button command and let's just put a big button right here. I Bear with me for a second. Print. And I'm going to make it like a primary color. Just make it a big button. Now here's, here's the kicker. This is kind of cool with FileMaker here. If I click on my, my ruler there, I can click object visibility hide when printing. Okay. And so you want that because you don't actually want the print button to print on the job ticket, but it's nice to have it on there. Just click it and print. And so if I right click and go to button setup, then I can go to single step here. And what do you think the print command is? Print. Print with dialog on. Um, we probably do want dialog on, but uh, at our shop, we have kind of uh, one central printer. And so I set up the, the, all the, the printing defaults. And when they hit that print button, it actually spits out the um, printer. But the way to set up those printer, printer defaults is specify printer options. And then I want to make sure I've got current records selected. And then you'd select your printer here. I'm working at the at home, so I don't have a printer here, but um, you can set these properties and all this stuff. And, and most of this information will save uh, in FileMaker. And so if you have one central printer, you can kind of set this up and make it quick for your team to print job tickets. So you click OK. Uh, but again, that that what's really important is that you select current record. It, it wants to default to records being browsed and you, you really want to print one job ticket at a time. It's rare that you want to print all the job tickets in your system. So I'm going to click OK. So there's that. OK. And then exit layout. And let's just see. I don't have a printer, but I think it's, yep, see? And it does that. Um, click OK. And it allows me to save this PDF. And it'll probably pop up. Anyway, that saved that PDF, and that's there. Um, but we can go look at it. Uh, I think it was in my was my desktop. It was, sorry, documents, man. So let's go look at that. There it is, and there's my job ticket uh, with information, and it includes uh, when I printed it. So you can see there's two pages that printed here, so that's pretty simple to address. If I go to edit layout, and I just make this a little smaller, and that will prevent that second page from printing. Okay, so you can mess with the size and, and everything. And that, that's just uh, takes a little bit of experimentation sometimes to get that just right with your printer and your margins and everything else. Um, there is definitely a more scientific approach to it, but I found that, that it just burn a couple of sheets, print them, get it looking just the way you want it. Um, okay, so then uh, the next step would be is it's not all that useful to have this job ticket thing and then have to sort you know sort for the records and then hit print. Really, we like working on this jobs layout here where we've got all these lists and stuff. So we'd like to create a button here that does that. And so we're going to get into a little bit of scripting here. But the first thing I'm going to do is put a button down here and say print job ticket. Okay. Um, well, okay, oh, I do want to say that, but let's see here. So we're backing up our file too, we're closing the file, we're making a copy of it on our desktop or something like that. And so if we mess something up, we can always revert to that backup, but lots and lots of, of copies of your FileMaker file dated with good backups. But okay, so we've got that, let's go create a script. So what I really want to do, you know what, let, let me let me take you to the, the simplest thing that we could do right now. So if I take this print job ticket button, we already have the print button on our 
on our job ticket itself. So we can print from there. So what we really need to be able to do is just get to that job ticket. And so there is a really, uh, it's like halfway to a script. I go to button setup and I go single step. Okay, this is what to do. If, if scripting is, is scaring you, just do this one thing, it's just one line. Um, GTRR, go to related record. Okay, and so what this is going to do is this is going to basically go to a related record or a group of related records on a uh, different layout. So you have, you have multiple layouts that can show the same record. So we've got the jobs table or the jobs layout here that kind of shows all of our jobs. It's got the list. And then we have a job ticket layout. They're both showing data from the same table, but they're different layouts or different previews or different, uh, uh, you know, versions of that uh, view. And so um, to, we want to go to a related record from that layout. This really powerful thing is very fast too. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands, millions of records in our FileMaker database. And I can like pinpoint, go right to a record using this. It, it uses um, the engines and FileMaker that are, that are super fast. So anyway, get related record from the jobs table. Okay. And then show a uh, record using the current layout, if I, is the layout that we're on. We don't want to do that. We want to go to the job ticket layout. So I'm going to click OK. And then uh, maybe I want to show in a new window, and that kind of preserves where I was in my old window. So I can name this job ticket. And uh, I'm just going to kind of pop it up there, position. I like to set just offset that a little bit so people, my users know that it's, it's a new window. Um, I might actually uh, not show the toolbars. I'll have the menu bar on there. Maybe not even the menu bar. Just be able to close, minimize, maximize, and resize. So I kind of want them to close it when they're done. So that's all you can kind of do is close it. And then show, this is important here, show related records, match current record only. Okay. And uh, basically what this is 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 – this one will go to just that one record. That's all it's going to show. Uh, match all records in the current found set. It's going to find all of the related records, to all of the records that you have kind of showing on your screen there. So match current record only is what we want to do for something like a job ticket. And click OK. OK. And then I like to change that cursor to hand. All right. Exit out. Save. Print job ticket. So what's this going to do? If I go to... Job 1005 here, print job ticket. It's going to pull up my job ticket. And we can adjust that window size, how it pulls up. You guys can play with that. Uh, and I can print it. Or I can close it. I can go to this job here, print job ticket. And I can print it. Or I can close it. So we've got these two job ticket or jobs. And I can print a job ticket from either one. So that's baseline, the simplest way to accomplish that. Okay, now, uh, if you are good with that, probably close the video here. If you want to get into a little more detail on how to automate this step a little bit, uh, I'm going to get into that right now. So um, one of the things I can do is I can go back to this button setup here. And I can convert this to script. Okay, and that's what I want to do. So print job ticket and close okay i'm gonna do that and then actually i don't like editing in this uh window because this is like tied to the button so i can click save here and i actually save that and then i'm gonna go to my scripts here and scripts for button there it is right there okay so i have this go to related record and i like that but I'm going to hit the shift three, so the, the pound sign there. I'm going to make a note. So I'm going to just say Gene and 531.21. That's when I'm working on this. I like to just name and date the scripts I'm working on. It just helps me remember. And then I might put some more notes. So the things that we're going to do with this script is go to uh, related record, print job ticket, close job ticket. So that's what we're going to do. So um, 
basically I'm going to control this script from that button. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to go to related record, show the related records from the table. Um, and so I'm going to leave that there. And we, we saw how to do that in that just a second ago. And then I'm actually going to print from here. Um, and I'm going to do it with dialog off, specify the printer options, current record, really important, print to the PDF. So I would select my printer there if I actually had a printer there. And then I'm going to do this. I'd, I'd set properties or whatever. Click OK. Um, yep. OK, so that's going to print, basically. And then um, close window. OK, so this here is really important. This is opening a new window when I start. OK, if I wasn't opening a new window there and close the window, I'd actually close my FileMaker file after I, I uh, printed that script. So I'm going to open the new window. I'm going to print and then I'm going to close the window. Okay. And so that is pretty straightforward. Okay. I saved that. And now I'm just going to go back to my button. And the cool thing is, is uh, since that script is like uh, a, a standalone script and not part of that button anymore, I don't really have to go in and edit this button at all. Um, I just save that script. And now when I click print job ticket, it automatically opens the job ticket back here. You can't see it because uh, it just didn't really load the window. It opens the job ticket. It wants to print it. And so it's asking me to save that file. So, okay. And so normally it would just print and then I click okay. And you can see it closed that job ticket window. So it's really fast for the for the uh, your users for the operator to just print that job ticket and go. It's going to have that uh, timestamp and and who they were uh, dated right at the bottom. Uh, so that's that's really really useful. Now one last trick. Okay, there I'll I'll cut it right there. You can stop right there. But the last trick that I'm going to show you is something that's useful for us is we really like to know how many job tickets have been printed. You know, what version is, has the job ticket been printed yet? Because once that job ticket has been printed, then you know it's out of the shop, maybe somebody's working on it. So it's good to know if somebody's printed it, if there's a kind of a record of that. So there's kind of a simple way to do that. Um, you could make like a log file where you're logging all these job ticket actions. Um, and we do that, but uh, we can also just increment a number um, right within our database. So I'm going to hit Control Shift D, which is you can also go up to File Manage Database, and under Jobs here, I'm going to say Ticket Print Number. I'm going to call it. Okay, number of times the job ticket has been printed. Okay, and this is actually going to be a number. And I'm going to create that okay, ticket print number. Okay. So I've got that. Now let me go back to my script. Okay, print. And then right here, so I'm on this record. Okay, it's it's important that I know, I, I mean, I just know in my mind that I'm on the record that I want to edit because I've gone to the related record, I've gone to that specific record. I've printed it and now after it prints, okay, so if, if something happens, if it gets shut down, I, I don't really want that to work with. After this prints, I want to set field, okay? And I'm going to specify the target field and that's the new field that we just created. So ticket print number, okay? And so the, the field is a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a box in the database with information. And so I can go to calculated result here and what I'm going to do is I, I want to, I could just put one in there and it's, it's going to change that field from nothing to one for this job. And so then I know that I've printed, right? Well, that only tells me that I printed once. The next time I print, it's going to put one in there again. The time after that's going to put one in there again. So I really want to add one to this field. So one way to do that is to actually go over here and if I double click and add the field, so jobs, ticket print number, okay. Now what that's saying is it's, it's uh, I think it's called recurrent, but you're putting the field within itself. So whatever data that's already in that field, we're gonna add it to that field, okay. And then I can go plus one. Now there's a lot of ways to do this, but uh, this way helps me remember what I'm doing. Um, 
So I can say jobs, ticket, print number. So whatever's in that field, whatever's in the ticket, print number, whatever, whatever's in there, if it's zero or if it's 20, and then add one to it. Okay, does that make sense? So whatever's in that field, add one to it, click OK. Okay, so what this is gonna do is this is gonna, every time we hit that print button and this script runs, it's gonna increment that field for that job up one. Okay, so let's test that out. Control S to save. And then I actually wanna show that on my layout here. And I'm just gonna kinda hide that over here. So fields, ticket print number, because it's just a number. But put that here there's a couple of things I can do I can let's go here and if it's empty placeholder text it's empty just put a zero in there okay because it, it's going to just be empty it's not it's not actually going to show zero um, and then uh, I want you know to be able to understand what it is so tooltip this is number of times a job this job ticket has been printed that way if they hover over it they know what it is so exit save number of times this job ticket has been printed zero and they're both set to zero even though we've test printed both of these uh we didn't have that script running so now if i hit print job ticket here this prints test one okay that script runs it closes now we're at one right now if i hit print again Test runs, test two, that script runs, it prints and increments to two. And this one has not been printed yet, print job ticket. So test 99, save, increments to one. Okay, and so now we know how many times that job ticket has been printed. Uh, we do this at FireSprint all the time, so we know how many times we've done that. Uh, very, very useful. Um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, the, the, <laughs> there's a way more advanced way to do it like we do it and we actually have another table so I'll, I'll tell you about it real quick and if you get into it but we actually have another table that's a log table for the job and so with that table uh, we always have a related uh, field that relates the, the, the record in that table to the job and we make entries we make log entries in that table uh, kind of like how a job is tied to a customer we tie the log to the job and one of the entries we'll make um, we'll go in and we'll create a new record that is, a, a, you know, we printed a um, job ticket. Now, we still use this job ticket increment field because it's way faster to just add them up that way. But then when we have that log record, it allows us to say, well, James printed the job ticket or Jim printed the job ticket or, you know, Sally did that. And what time they did it, we know when, we know who did it. Uh, maybe we'll add some more notes about it. Uh, maybe we'll we'll record some data at that moment in time and say they printed the job ticket and at that moment the quantity was 27 or something like that um and so then you start to build this history of your job uh and that's very very useful and uh, maybe one of these days i'll, I'll build uh or i'll i'll kind of show how to do that um in filemaker but uh, uh hopefully that was very helpful to you thank you for watching take care